are dealing with uh, tables of data, okay? Okay, and let's say, um,
beginning Democrat, if we took a person at random, is 50 over 110, and that is like what, 0. 0.4545? I don't, I don't, I don't know. 4.6? Four, six. Four, six? Oh, okay. I asked, someone is supposed to uh, punch this out. 0.4545? Is that right? Four, five, four. Yeah, okay, great, great. Still up to snuff. All right. Is that okay? Yeah. What is the probability, okay, using the rules that we've learned so far, what is the probability that someone is not a Democrat? Oh, 50 minus 110, so... So 1 minus 50 over 110. Yeah, so I would do 1 minus the probability of Democrat. Okay, so this is the complement rule, right? Yes. So I could just do 1 minus 0. 0.4545. Mm -hmm. And I would get uh, 0. 0.5454. <laughs> uh, I guess 0. 0.5455 actually. Probability of not a Democrat. <coughs> How's that? Good? Nod your head? Alright, alright. Okay, if you're not okay, shake your head. I have a question. Nobody shaking their head? Yeah, you have a question. Um, why did you do one minus the. Where did we get that point? This, uh, well, I erased it, but that was the complement rule, okay? okay? So it's either, when I pick a person, that person is either going to be a Democrat or that person's not going to be a Democrat, okay? That's it. Those are the only two possible outcomes in the entire universe. We can't have something else, okay? Either this person is registered Democrat or this person is not, okay? So the probability of the person being registered Democrat, we got to be 0.4545, okay? And the probability that this person is not is 1 minus that. So 1 minus 0.4545. So you couldn't do 60 over 110? Yeah, you could do 60 over 110, but where did you get 60? 25, 30, and 5. Okay, okay, you got to do 25 plus 30 plus 5. That's completely valid, okay? You could do 25 plus 30 plus 5 equals 60, and then you do 60 over 110. But what if I have 80 categories, okay? then you would have 79 numbers to add up, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. That might not be so, <coughs> so much fun. So this this is like a it's like a little shortcut. Oh, but yeah. you're right, both methods would work perfectly fine. Okay. Alright. Okay. Um, what if I asked what is the probability of someone being independent or other? So not part of the two uh, Two parties. So 35. So independent or over other. 110. Okay. 35 over 110. Yeah, 35 over 110. So I would do, so this is, it's actually, let me uh, break it down. It's the probability of other, or uh, probability of independent plus the probability of other. Because we've, we've already 
this was kind of already intuitive with the uh, coin flip and stuff, and we saw it, and we formalized it with a rule, right? So this is something that's already kind of intuitive. If I said, what's the probability of independent or other? You guys knew it was 35 out of 110. Something already intuitive about it. But just like everything else, we formalize these things with a rule, okay? So we said the probability of a combination of events, A or B, is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B, okay? And notice I'm not writing A or B equals A plus B. It's the probability of A or B equals the probability of A plus the probability of B. Okay. And this uh, applies, uh, let me just write this thing, only when there is no overlap between A and B. Exclusive because they will appear on future tests or things like that. So what does it mean for it to be disjoint or mutually exclusive? That means there is no overlap between the two events, right? So what were my two events here that I'm combining with an or statement? Independent or other. Independent or other, okay? So the, I could draw a person and that person could be independent. That's one event. I could draw a person and that person could be registered with an other party. And okay, that's another event. Those are disjoint or mutually exclusive events because there's no overlap. Someone cannot be registered as uh, with an other party and at the same time be registered as independent. Right? That's impossible. You cannot be registered independent and at the same time be with the other party. So that is, that means they are mutually exclusive or disjoint. They're just two words for the same thing. Is that okay? Alright. So, can you guys name other categories that are disjoint? Okay, so, uh, yeah, all of these are here, in the, uh, are disjoint. Someone cannot be registered Republican and at the same time registered Democrat, okay? Um, you cannot, uh, you know, uh, it, it used to be a mutually exclusive thing, but, um, you know, things like sex, <coughs> male or female, Traditionally, that's mutually exclusive. You cannot be um, both male and female at the same time. Uh, you know, although some might argue uh, against that. It depends, oh, right? Math or diet. Yeah, okay, so. Yeah, about one in, uh, one in 500 births require uh, parents to make a decision. That was a, <laughs> that was a fear of mine. I didn't want to be faced with that. Um, Okay, so anyway, uh, so those are mutually exclusive, things that don't have overlap, okay? On the other hand, okay, I'm gonna draw another table up here and you can tell me, all right? So let's say, uh, let's say we broke this out, okay? So we've got Republican, Democrat, Independent, Other, okay, and let's say, um, we also asked, are you male or female? Okay, and so let's say um, this ended up being 15, 10, and this was
What do we call this thing? This table. What? Two. Two. Two-way table. Or sometimes called a contingency table. All right, gold star for you. A two-way table. Why do we call it a two-way table? We are looking at two categorical variables. Two categorical variables. Okay. And uh, and these numbers are still 25. If I did totals, right? If I make the total column. What is the probability that someone is male? Your answer? 56 divided by Probability that someone is Democrat or male. Isn't that like disjoint, like the one on top? Yeah. So we, we calculated earlier what's the probability. From earlier, we found the probability of Democrat was. 50 over 110, which was 0. 0.4545, right? Right now. Okay. What is the probability of someone being Democrat or male? 50 over 110 plus 6 over 110. Okay, okay. Write a number down on your paper, okay? And then I will write the answer up on the board. Oh, you add them. What's the male one? Oh. So we see six over one ten divide it, and then you add, um, add it with that. Okay, I'm going to uh, write a number on the board. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. How did that happen? Okay. Let's take a look at this. Let's take a look. All right. What does it mean to be Democrat or male? All right. Let's see. Okay. Does this person, Republican male, qualify to no. be in my Democrat or male yes. category? Yes. yes. Not a Democrat, but male. Okay. So this person qualifies. Or these 15 people do. What about this? These? these yes. yes. They, are, they qualify. Double qualify. Okay. <laughs> Uh, independent males? Qualified. Qualified. What about these? Qualified. Okay. Female Republicans? No. Oh, you do? Yes. Female Six Democrats? Yes. These? No. No. Okay. All right. So, I have five numbers to add up, and I would get 82 out of 110. Okay? So, if I add up the five numbers that qualify, I would get 15 plus 24 plus 15 plus 2, plus 26, and I would get 82 out of 110. So that's one way to do it, okay? That's kind of the most tedious way where we're breaking everything down into little parts, okay? 
and then don't add it with the five. No, no, we just that's, that's it. it. That's it. That's okay. it. Democrat or male, that's all the people that qualify as Democrat or male. Okay. Now someone, okay, I think someone astute said, oh, I could just take the male column and add 26. That also works, okay? Because this number 56 counts all four of these together, right? That's, that's actually what 56 is. 56 is the total of these four. Okay? So another way is I could just do 56 plus... 26, and I would get 82, okay? If we had a giant table, maybe 20 rows, 20 columns, or something like that, we got a whole bunch of different categories, that might still be a whole bunch of numbers to add up, okay? Five numbers, that's not the end of the world to have to add five numbers together, okay? But if you had a whole bunch of numbers, we might not want to do that, okay? So there is another way we could do this, okay? One is... Okay, and some of you guys tried this, right? Because we wanted to add things together. I could take the probability of Democrat or male, and I could say, well, let's take the probability of being Democrat and add the probability of being male, okay? Probability of being Democrat, what is that? 50 out of 110. And what was the probability of being male? 56 out of 110. Okay, is that all right so far? Yeah. But when we add those two together, we don't get 82, we get 106, right? right. So what are we doing wrong? You're counting Democrats. Yeah, I'm counting these people. Remember we said the, these people double qualify? Right. Okay, and because they, quote, double qualify, when I do it this way, I'm double counting them, okay? So we don't want to double count them, we only want to count them once. So we subtract off a 24, okay? So we only count them once, because otherwise I'd be counting them twice, okay? So I subtract off 24 out of 110, okay? And that would be subtracting off <coughs> those who are Democrat and male. You guys see that? Yeah. So 50 plus 56 minus 24, and this will give me 82 out of 110. <coughs> All right, so let's check our understanding, okay? And to force you to use the formula, I'm going to re erase all of these other numbers. I'm going to just leave the relevant numbers there. And I'm going to say, what is the probability of someone being female or independent? Write a number down. Don't uh, don't shout it out. Okay. Write a number down. Female or independent? Yeah. What's the probability that someone is female or independent? Well. Oh. Okay. okay you have all the numbers you need. You have all the numbers you need.
All right. What is the answer? The answer is 0.6273 or 69 out of 110. Okay. And so following the same pattern that we used here, what no, what am I doing? Probability of so if I use the same pattern, I would use probability of what? Female plus the probability of independent, independent minus, minus, minus okay, minus probability of female Male and independent. And Is that okay? Yeah. All right. So what's the probability of being female? 54 over 110. 54 over 110. <coughs> Plus, what's the probability that we select an independent? 30 over 30 over 110. And the probability of being female and independent? 15 over 110. All right. Great. And this gives me 69 out of 
if you guys see questions like this on the quiz next week, we'll be okay? Yes. Okay, great. All right. Now let me introduce another concept, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the numbers back. Um, and I might need some help here. I think it was 15, 10, and 26, 24? No, 24, 26. And two and three, is that right? Yes. Yes, okay. I guess even though I erased it off the board, if you had the table in your notes, you could have done it the other way. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> Let me introduce this idea of conditional probability. that someone is male. If I pick a random person, what's the probability that this person is male? 50-50. No. Oh, from that chart? From our chart. Oh, I thought like that. Yeah, if I pick a random person from my chart, <laughs> what's the probability that this person is male? 56. Oh, yeah, 56 yeah. over 110. And we found that to be 0.509. Okay, so pretty, pretty much 51%. Okay, like there's like a 51% chance that this person is male. 0.509. Now, what if I gave you a piece of information? Okay, so, so just imagine I've got the door here. Okay, see the door. I said I picked a person at random, and I put this person behind the door. And I'd say, what's the probability that the person behind the door is male? And you would tell me 56 out of 110. Okay. okay. And if you're right, you win a prize. Now. What if I gave you a piece of information? Okay, I said, okay, I picked a person at random, and this person is a Republican. This person said, um, that per that registered Republican. What is the probability that this person is a male? Yeah, so, if we know the person is a Republican, just to a pool of 25 people, right? Because there's 25 Republicans in our, in our pool. And so, in this case, the probability of being male, okay, well, let me just uh, write the answer. We, we say is 15 out of 25. Is that okay? And that turns out to be uh, 0.6. Okay, so our answer probability of being male changes if we know the person is Republican. Yeah? Okay. So, the way we write this, if we know the person is Republican, what's the probability that this person is male? We write the probability of being male, and I write a vertical bar, and I write Republican after the vertical bar. Okay? So the probability of being male Vertical bar Republican, okay? So the part that comes after the vertical bar, okay, we, re we call the vertical bar as given. It's the probability of being male given Republican. This is the piece of information that we know. So if we know the person's Republican, the probability that the person is male is going to be 15 out of 25. Is that okay? All right, so let's check our understanding. Okay, I'm gonna put two, two things up on the board, and I want you guys to find the answer. Don't shout out the answer, and I'll put, put the answers up. Okay, so one, I want you to know what is the, figure out what is the probability that if I pick a random person 
What is the probability that this person is a Republican? Okay. And then, if I tell you that this person is male, what is the probability that this person is Republican? Tell me again where you got the 25. 15 out of 25? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because here I'm saying I know that the person is Republican, so I'm only limiting myself to these 25 people. Okay? Because the Democrats, the Independents, the other people, I'm ignoring them because I now I know we only have a Republican person behind the door. So what's the problem that this person is male? Well, 15 of the Republicans are male and 10 of the Republicans are male. Decimal form, this is this. Okay, you guys get this? 0.227? Alright, so if I pick someone at random, what's the probability that this person is a Republican? 25 out of 110, right? So there's 110 people total. Of those, 25 are Republicans. Probability of selecting a Republican, 25 out of 110, 0.227. Okay. All right. This is this is coming from some liberal, uh, like a liberal population, right? Some like, like UCLA is pretty. Uh, I, I have no idea. But it's probably like this. Okay. All right. Uh, what about this? Okay. So now we know someone is male. Okay. So that limits our pool down to how many people? There's 56 males total, okay? And how many are re of 15. those are Republicans? Yeah, so 15 out of 56 gives me 0.268, okay? Now notice these two things look similar. Probability of male given Republican and probability of Republican given male. These two look similar but the answers are very, very different, right? This is 0.268, this is 0.6. Very different situations, okay? How do we read this again? What is the probability of? Republican given male. Republican given male, okay? And if I wanted to phrase it this way, I would say, if we know the person is male, is male what is the probability that this person is? Republican, Republican okay? They sound similar, but they're different. Okay, so please make sure we understand the difference between this and this. Okay? Because next week on the quiz, you will see something similar. I will have this form and I will have that form. And you better give me the right answer according to uh, each, each of those things. Okay? Is this okay? All right. Part, do we have questions? Do we need more examples? 
<coughs> okay, so now that we have this idea of conditional probability, I can introduce the idea of independence. Okay, now independence sounds like it might be related to this disjoint and mutually exclusive thing. They are not. It's a completely different concept. Uh, so do not mix up independence with disjoint mutually exclusive. In fact, if two things are mutually exclusive, they cannot be independent. Okay? having an association. Okay. <coughs> Last week we looked at relationships between what kind of variables? Last week, you guys. We looked at relationships between two... Categorical? No. Okay. Two numeric variables. Two numeric variables, right? We have an x-axis, numeric variables, a y-axis, numeric variables. We looked at the relationship between two numeric variables. Okay? And we, if there was a relationship, we would say the two variables have correlation. correlation. Thank you. Okay, some redemption going on here. Okay? We get, have correlation. And if they were not related, we would say correlation was zero. Zero. Okay? Negative means there's still a relationship. It just goes in a negative direction. Here, independence is a similar concept, but it's for categorical variables. Okay? Categorical variables may have a relationship, or they may not. If they have no relationship, we would say they are independent. Okay? Independent means the two variables in question, or the two variables do not have a relationship. Changing one has no effect on the other, okay? Or there's just no no associated change. Okay. So the idea here is remember the example here, right? I said here's a door. Okay. Behind this door, I've got a mystery someone. Now, when you didn't know anything about this person, what was your probability of guessing that this person was male? 0.56 over 110. Yeah, you'd say 0.56 over 110 or 0.509. Okay, you could say probably that this person behind the door is male is like 51%. Okay. Once I told you that this person was a Republican, did your answer change? Yeah, your answer for probability that this person is male is now what? If I told you it was a Republican. Um, to a 0.268. No, 15, 0. 0. 0.6, okay? I'm, the piece of information I'm giving you is that this person is Republican. Okay, behind the door, I have a Republican person. Okay, what's well, the problem that this person is male? The answer is now 0. 0.6. It's not this, right? What is the information I'm giving you over here? I'm giving you the information that the person is male, okay? Oh. So if I said, and now I'm giving you a piece of information. The person behind this door is male. What's the probability that this person is male? Your answer is? Oh, I'm telling you the person's male. No, it's point two. Point two. Point two. Listen to my question. Listen to my question. The person behind the door is male. What's the probability that this person is male? 100. Oh, it's 100%. 100%. Point one. How would I write that? One. <laughs> I would write probability of male given that the person is male is one. Okay. okay, but now, but that's not the question. I'm asking, okay, so 
if you knew nothing, the probability that this person is male, you would write 0 0.509, okay? And if I tell you that the person is Republican, and I ask you, what's the probability that this person is male? You tell me the answer is 0.6, okay? So your answer has changed. So, would you say Republican and male are independent? No. They actually do have a relationship. There is some kind of connection between being Republican and being male. Whatever that connection is, it doesn't matter, okay? According to our data, according to our data, knowing that someone's Republican increases the chance that this person is male, okay? Whatever the reasoning, doesn't matter. All we're saying is that there's some kind of connection according to our data, is that okay? So, this has changed, okay? Um, these numbers are not the same. So according to our data, Republican and male, uh, the events, not, I can't, I can't spell, I was almost going to write replicant, which would be like um, Blade Runner. Okay, so the event, Republican is not independent. From the event, male. So the event that we pick someone and this person is Republican is not independent from the event that this person is male. Is that okay? Let me ask you another question. Okay. Is female independent from being in, uh, registered with an other party? shouted out the answer, but I want you guys to go through the calculation and tell me what numbers are you comparing, okay? And if you need to, pretend you've got the door and someone behind it and ask, what is the probability of this versus what is the probability of this if I know this other aspect about the person? So you guys should be uh, working, you guys should be trying to figure this out.
one of the numbers you might calculate. And the other number that you might calculate. Probability, okay? We know nothing. What is, this is the situation where we know nothing about the person, right? Behind the door, I got someone. We don't know anything about this person. What's the probability that this person is a female? 54 out of 110. Yeah, 54 out of 110. And you would tell me that that number turns out to be. Yeah, okay. 0.49, okay? 0.491, whatever you want to write, okay? telling you this person is registered as one of the other parties. Okay, maybe this person is registered, I don't know. I don't know what the other parties are. Libertarian, okay? <coughs> this person is registered with one of the other parties. What is the probability that this person is female? Three out of five. Three out of five. And that number is? Point six. Okay, three out of five. Okay, so did your probability change? Yes. Yes. So are they independent? No. 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 Okay, so they are not independent. Okay, so if, if you have a situation where the number doesn't change, then you would have uh, independent events. Independent events, okay? So if the number is 0.49 here and it's 0.49 over here, Independent events, okay? That's not the uh, the case here, though. Okay. Uh, okay. So, exam. Yeah, we have a question. Sorry, you said if numbers didn't change, it's um, independent. Yeah, if the numbers didn't change, they they would be independent. Okay. So let's. Uh, uh, okay. Let's try another example. Okay. <coughs> so uh, I'll just tell you the answer right now. I'm going to give you an example where two things are independent. Okay? And, uh, and we'll do the math to just kind of back this up. Corrective lenses, okay, whether that's uh, glasses or contacts, and then uh, others will be uh, no corrective lenses. Okay. All right, and then we have males and we have females. All right, so let's say. Uh, Let's say we're in, uh, I don't know, some some club where there's uh, more women than guys, okay? And Some, uh, something and some people wear corrective lenses, others don't. Okay. All right. I'm gonna. So is uh, female independent of corrective lenses? Okay. Or is corrective lenses independent of female? Okay. We could switch those words around. It doesn't matter. Okay. What numbers would we compare? 
what, what things would I have to calculate? Okay, I would do probability of female. Okay, and then I would compare this versus probability of given corrective lenses. Is that okay? Yeah. All right, and then this calculation would be what? 16 over 28. Are there any questions on this? Okay, I know my front row. Uh, we've got this here, um, Victoria. What would the probability of um, corrective lenses given female? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's also a valid thing. Here, let's just do this. Okay. Okay. All right. So we have this simplifies down to four out of seven, or uh, in decimal form, that's something else. I don't know. Point five seven one. Okay, and over here, I also get 4 out of 7, 0.571. Okay, so, so again, just pretend I've got the door, and I say someone's standing behind my door. The door keeps getting smaller and smaller. Okay. <laughs> someone's standing behind this door. What's the probability that this person's female? Your answer would be 4 out of 40 out of 70.571. Okay, wait, hang on a second. I'm going to give you a piece of information. This person wears corrective lenses. Whether it's contacts or glasses, this person needs corrective lenses. What's the probability that this person's female? It's still 0.571. It's still 0.571. Okay? So did that bit of information help you at all? No. No, that bit of information of knowing someone wearing corrective lenses didn't help you at all in terms of changing your answer of knowing whether or not this person is female. Okay? So in that case, these two are the same, so they are independent. Okay. All right. Harry asked a good question, and that was, what do we do? Can I use probability of corrective lenses? Given female. Okay, what is the answer here? What, what, what's, what's the probability of someone wearing corrective lenses if we know this person is female? 16 out of 20 out of 40. 16 out of 40. 16 out of 40. Why? Yeah, why is that? Yeah, because here, what is the part, part that's given to us? Female. The part that's given is female. So now we are limiting ourselves to just this column <coughs> of females, okay? We're ignoring the 30 males. We're only looking at the 40 females. Of those, how many were corrective lenses? 16 out of 40, okay? All right, I would compare that number to what then? Uh, the corrective lens. The probability of corrective lenses, right? So here I would not, I would not use probability of female. I would use probability of corrective lenses. Okay. And so this becomes 28 out of 70. Okay. And so the answer here is 0.4, and over here I get 0.4. They are the same. Therefore, they are independent. feeling about this? Good. We're feeling good? Great, because you will see it on the quiz. You will see it on the quiz next week, okay? <laughs> you will see it on the quiz next week. Okay, so just like everything else, we generalize these things into a rule or a formula or whatever you want to call it, okay? Now, if you understand this concept as is, great, okay? There's gonna, I'm going to write kind of the generalized formula or whatever. And if that doesn't make sense to you, don't worry about it, okay? But some of you, I mean, it appears in the book, and some of you guys like these things, okay? So, to check if they are independent, okay?
the probability of A given B, this would equal what? If A and B are independent, the probability of A given B should equal the probability of A. Okay, which is what we saw here. Probability of female given corrected lens equals the probability of female. The probability of corrected lens given female equals the probability of corrected lens. Okay, so the part in the front matches the, the thing. Okay, so if A and B are independent, then the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A. Uh, sticking around through uh, through lecture and stuff. Actually, does somebody have a sheet of paper? We'll do a bonus point here. Huh? Huh? Okay, so I will give you uh, one extra bonus point in your uh, on your homework <laughs> grades. Okay. So just uh, just. Oh, you're killing them. Huh? <laughs> like telling them? <laughs> it's a term. Like you're, do, like you're awesome. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So all you have to do is just, uh, just put your, uh, no, put count, the number it, right? One through how, whatever it is. Okay, and put your name. All right. And then if, uh, if the front side fills up, just go on the back. Okay. Now I'm gonna count how many students there are here. And I shouldn't have any more names than the number of students, okay? If I come back with more names than the number of students, then no one will get a point, okay? So don't sign in your friends or anything like that, okay? So don't sign in your friends, just sign your own name, put one name, put, put the number, put your name, pass it around. I'm gonna count how many students there are, and I shouldn't get any more names than there are numbers of students, okay? of independent events. They're independent events because every time you flip the coin, it has nothing to do 
of what happened earlier. Okay? So if I a series of coin flips, so an example is a series a series of coin flips, okay? You flip a coin three times, each coin flip is unaffected by the previous flips. Okay. So independent means the outcome of one does not affect the outcome of the other or a third. Okay, so here we've got sequences of independent events. If the events are independent, probability I get heads on the first one and heads on the second okay so this is two events here, okay? It's probability of heads on first and heads on second. Is that okay? The outcome of the second coin flip is independent of the outcome of the first coin flip. I can say the pro this becomes the probability of heads on the first times the probability of heads on the second. Is that okay? Alright, so what is the probability to get heads on the first coin flip? 0.5. 0.5 times 0.5. times what's the probability to get heads on the second coin flip? 0.5. 0.5. So the probability of getting heads on the first and heads on the second is 0.5 times 0.5, 0.25.
Let's say I have a dot, okay? Okay, so I've got um, I've got a die here. So we're gonna roll a die. Um, and every time I roll the die, it's independent of previous die rolls, right? So we're gonna roll a die three times. that I get um, a number one on the first, um, first, first roll, okay, I don't get a one on the second, and then I roll uh, an even number on the third. <laughs> Number one on the first roll, I don't get a one on the second roll, and I want an even number on the third die roll. Does that make sense? Yes. The sequence of events, yes. Okay, so one of these is a comma. Okay, so we're going to break this out into three events, okay? Three events. So first, I want probability of getting a one on the first. Okay? And I multiply this by the probability of what? Getting a not a one on the second. Not a one on the uh, second times probability of an even. On the third. Okay. Okay, what's the probability of getting a one on the first? One, one out of six. Point one. Okay, one out of six times or point one six six seven, that's fine. What's the probability I don't get a one on the second? One yeah. yeah, so it's five out of six, right? It's technically one minus one out of six because it's a complement, or this is five out of six, right? Okay, so this is 0.8333. And then what's the probability of getting an even number? Three out of six. Three out of six, or 0.5. Is that okay? Great. All right, and so I multiply all of those numbers together to get my answer, which is something. Point zero six nine four. Yeah, point zero six nine four. Okay. Anyone confused? No, we're good. Great. I roll a die three times. What is the probability that I get uh, the number one all three times? Okay. All right, here, I'll, I'll put a few questions up, okay? And I want you to find the answers. Don't, don't shut them up. So that's going to be one of them. What's the probability? I um, do not get the number one at all in any, any uh, after three die rolls, I get no number ones, okay? So no ones uh, after three die rolls, or in, in, 